I love world building so very much, but I hear a lot of people say things about world building that aren't exactly true. So today I'd like to talk about what world building isn't. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Charlie and I feel like I should start this with a few bona fides. I have been a published writer for the last 15 years and I am currently in the process of rebooting everything because I realized some things about myself which causes me to feel like some of my earlier works are a little bit not on brand anymore. So I'm completely changing everything, which means I'm doing a lot of world building and it is so near and dear to my heart and I'm going to be talking about it a lot more on this channel. But I hear some people say things about world building that are not exactly true. And I'd like to just go after a few of those things now. I'm not going to be calling anybody out because this isn't that kind of channel, but know that if you feel called out by anything that I say in this video, I do it out of love already. So the first thing that I would like to just put out there is world building is not an extravagance. And I feel like that should go without saying, especially if you're doing writing science fiction or fantasy, that maybe you would want to do a little bit of world building and know about the world that you're writing in, either during the edit phase or during the writing phase. But I do hear quite a few people talking about world building as if it is this kind of extravagance that people get into, that they just allow themselves to sit back and try to find all of the wonderful things in the world instead of actually getting writing done. That's called world building disease, not world building. If you're actually world building, then you're working on your project. And in this modern era with things like World Anvil and everything else, that actually becomes marketable, monetizable, and uh, community building projects that you can put out into the world to make the world a better place. So do your world building. The second thing that I hear said about world building way too much is that world building is something that lets you get lost and completely run away and not actually get a story done. Again, this is world building disease. Look, when you're building a world, if you are writing it for a novel, a short story, or a novel series, the only bits of world building that have to be done are those that are germane to the story. This is why I do my world building inside out. A little bit of world building to understand my characters at the beginning, I write the zero draft of the story, and then based on what emerges in that draft, I go back and write more world building that I then bring into the next revision. That way I'm not getting lost into everything else. Now, if you're an unfortunate soul like me, who's making a tabletop role playing game, this is a completely different thing. There has to be enough world in your setting to allow anyone's imagination to be fired off so that they want to write in your setting. That is a tricky thing to do and a hard balance to have. But if you're just writing a novel or a novel series, you don't need all that detail. You can have it if you want, but you don't need it. Restrict your world building to just the things that you're wanting to write. Don't let yourself fall victim to the world builder's disease. The third thing that I hear a lot is world building is so complicated. Well, that depends on the type of world building that you're doing. You see, much like magic systems where you have hard and soft magic systems, world building works much the same way. See Tim Hickman's wonderful video on his Hello Future Me channel for more information on that. So what does that mean? When you're doing your world building, you can write vast copious amounts of history for all of the peoples of your planet. You could do the maps, you could do all of the flags and the crests and all of that stuff, which I tend to do anyway because it's a way that I actually relax and I don't feel like I'm working, but I'm actually getting stuff done for my worlds. But that's not necessary. If you want to just have enough information there so that the story feels viable and let it grow over time, well, that's how some of the biggest franchises in the world got to be where they are today. Now, I highly suggest if you are going to follow that course, make a Bible for your setting. And every time you finish a story, add stuff to it. Consistency is the reason we do world building. Yes, the milieu is great. Feeling completely involved in the setting is great. All of those other things that we bring into our world through the world building are wonderful and things that we should be doing. But the real reason for world building is consistency. That way you don't say this thing happened a thousand years ago and then later say it happened a century ago. The only time it's appropriate to do that is if there's a dispute about the actual history, which could be a fun little thing to add to your setting. If it's just a mistake though, 
If there's not actually a dispute and you just, well, like with your general writing said, oh, the character has red eyes, he has blue eyes, he has green eyes, no, they're gold, and there's no reason for the character's eyes to be changing, oopsie doodle, you just completely messed up. You want to be consistent. That is the main and sole reason for world building, unless you're trying to make a naturalistic story. Ugh, I just said a bad word. All right, friends, let's talk about the elephant in the room, realistic fantasy. There's no such thing. Thank you. No, I really mean this. This is a very important thing to get down. For all of the people who are trying to say that my world building is realistic, my fantasy world is completely 100% real, they are wrong. For two reasons. One, uh, it's a made-up world. Anything that you excuse coming into your setting because that's how it is in the real world, start questioning your own biases there. Is there slavery in your setting? Is there a reason for slavery in your setting? Or is it just because, well, there was slavery in the real world, so let's throw that in there too. If it doesn't need to be there, if it doesn't serve a purpose, it is harming your story. Remember that, anything in your story that is not actually helping us feel a sense of place, a sense of character, a sense of mood, a sense of tone, is harming the story. If you're just throwing slavery in because, you know, <laughs> they had that in uh, the real world, you've just hurt your story. The same thing is true for sexism, homophobia, racism. If these things are not actually going to play into your story at all, if they're not going to be a factor that your characters are going to have to contend with and maybe even overthrow, then you're just harming your story by including them. Just because they exist in the real world does not mean that you need to have them in yours. And I'm getting tired of this excuse. We are not trying to recreate the real world in our stories, unless your story takes place in the real world. You don't have to do world building. You have to do research. That is a very different thing. If you are constructing a world, you have say over what goes into that world. You have power to change it. Ryan Murphy in his Netflix series, Hollywood, reimagined Hollywood history so that Rock Hudson came out in the 50s. And how did that affect and change the world? Is that realistic? No, because he didn't. Is that what actually happened? No. But it made for a very interesting story, a lot of new drama, and a great alternate history. Which, guess what? Now needs world building. So please stop giving in to these myths. Stop letting this bog you down. World building is fun, it's simple, it's easy. And we're going to be talking about that more in the days and weeks to come. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did and you haven't already, please like and subscribe and maybe hit that notification bell. I stream twice a week. If you would like to see more stuff like this and maybe support it and help my stories and worlds get out to you easier, you'll find links to both my coffee and my Patreon down in the description box below. Since the world is a garbage fire and hasn't gotten any better, say it with me now. Black lives matter. Black trans lives matter. Trans identities are magic. And until next time, may you have the courage to ride your dreams into reality, and don't forget to have the fun. Bye!